Good evening and welcome to The Bloggers Magazine on I-24 News, where we bring you different perspective on social stories and trends from the Middle East. Today we will be discussing how cultural traits can affect consumer culture and business dealings, both on a local and international scale. We'll examine the Israeli cultural phenomenon of the Freier, which uh, best translates to sucker, and how this one word has such a great impact on Israeli business and consumer culture. Joining me in the studio today, Yoshua Oz, the founder of the No Files website. Thank and you. hello, me. hello. And uh, Niv Ellis, a blogger and the business reporter for the Jerusalem Post. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Um, so uh, let's, to, to get us started, let's uh, take a look at three short stories from around the world that recently caught our attention. <laughs> According to the local New York magazine DNA Info, the latest fad to hit the Big Apple is the beard transplant. The customers include the many hipsters from Williamsburg and Park Slope. For this vanity gift, clientele must be ready to shell out between three and seven thousand dollars. A lucrative and hairy business indeed. In Israel, parking your tank isn't free. The IDF has to pay parking tickets just like everybody else. That's the latest message from the chairman of the State Control Committee, Amnon Cohen, demanding that the IDF pays back the 11 million shekel or 2.2 million euro that they owe for various parking violations involving IDF vehicles. <laughs> Tunisian Jabour Majri was recently freed. In 2012, after the Tunisian Revolution, the young Tunisian was sentenced to seven years in jail for publishing Mohammed characters on Facebook. After serving two years, Majri was recently granted clemency from President Monsef Malzouki. Unfortunately, he's involved in another case, so his release may be temporary. All right, Joshua, let's uh, start with you. What spoke to you out of these? Are you considering a, a beard implant? I'm going to pass on that. <laughs> I had an experience previously, and I moved on from that. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, I think it shows the, the nature of the Israeli character that no one wants to be taken advantage of, which I think is also a, a universal desire. Um, yeah. The army should should have to pay their parking tickets just like I should. All right. Yeah. Then again, if you're the one with the tank, you know, come get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. That actually uh, brings us to the topic of the day: the fear of being a sucker, or what we call in Hebrew a fail, may well be one of the most basic drives of the typical Israeli. The sphere encompasses not just falling prey to a scam, but also getting a worse deal than someone else in just about any situation. In fact, even Benjamin Netanyahu once said after the failure of the peace talks again, that Israelis are not friars and do not give without receiving. For more on this cultural trait and its implications, here are, uh, here's our uh, portrait of the Israeli friar by Tracy Levy. A fryer is someone who thinks something is valuable and then buys it at a very high price. I am a fryer. I'm always excited to buy anything I see at the highest price. You can be a fryer if you're an idiot. Someone who doesn't haggle like my wife. It's not being a fryer, it's being smart. Being a fryer is being naive, believing people. The word fryer, with Germanic and Yiddish roots, most directly translates to mean sucker. This fear permeates the daily dealings of life in Israel, where people are constantly working lo latzet frayer, not to be a sucker. Jaffa's Shuka Pishpashim Market is one place you can watch the fight against being a frayer play out, like this shopkeeper who sells a sign even though he knows there's a major spelling error. I had 50 signs like this. I've sold 45. Yesterday, a woman told me there was a mistake on the sign. It's supposed to read, we'll save the day, not we'll gave the day. Are you going to call them and tell them? No. If I sold 45 of them, it can't be that bad. They're not friars, they're defects. In the international business world, this character trait can be even more problematic. I came in shock coming to Israel. Like, I would have no clue in how to do business in Israel. And 
you know, I, I see folks that have just recently come here, I'm like, good luck. I mean, I, the reason I was able to is because I went to the military, and even then I had difficulty. Alon Ben Shoshan is an Israeli tech entrepreneur who lived in the U.S. until age 15 and has worked both there and in Israel. On the popular crowdsourcing question and answer site Quora, a question was recently posed, why are Israeli people so hard to work with? The question, asked by a high-tech worker in Silicon Valley, garnered over 60 responses, some maintaining and some defending this assumption of Israelis. We're in this ex constant existential crisis, and I think that's also what drives the entrepreneurship in this country. The only way to stay afloat um, in terms of your personal economics is to cut corners here in this country. I'm living in Ranana, I'm not in the middle of Tel Aviv, I'm not in a luxury apartment I'm renting, and um, I'm barely able to finish the month where my expenses are food, uh, you know, childcare a little bit, and um, you know, that's about it. We have one car and we don't really use it that much. I bike to work or I take the bus to work, right? Uh, and because everyone's in that situation, they're always trying to do combinot, right? Alon is not the only native to believe the fear of being a friar stems from Israel's daily struggles. The country is constantly in action, wars and so on. We always feel we are robbed. People are warm-tempered because of all the events. Gaza, the north, Lebanon, Syria. People always feel like they get screwed, so they screw each other. Here, this is also a friar, and this one is not. All right, let's begin with you, uh, Niamh. What do you think is the source of this trait? I think a lot of it is historical. Listen, the Jews have been through a lot, and the kind of people that get here is sort of a self-selecting crowd, people that are tough, people that manage to immigrate to survive a lot of difficult events. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, you know, that's, uh, that's the kind of trait that you really need in order to survive. Um, that said, it's also part of the Middle Eastern culture. It's in a way showing the way that we've integrated into the culture here, the <laughs> the, uh, the market culture going and haggling at the shuk, you know, to make sure you get the best price. Right, right. Because one could claim that actually, instead of this being the, the result of the, you know, the difficult life in Israel, life is difficult in Israel because of this trait. What do you think? Well, that could be true, but I think I would agree a lot with what, what Neve said, that um, first off, I think there's a basic human desire not to be treated uh, poorly, to be taken advantage of. Everyone wants to be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps the Jewish people have a, a unique experience with this, coming from different places around the world where we're often mistreated by authority figures, by government, by other cultures and other peoples. Right. Um, and that even extended here to pre-state Israel, and maybe even to some extent today. Now, but you both uh, uh, were born and grew up in the States. Coming mm -hmm. to Israel, did you feel like a friar? Um, I think that uh, there are a lot of differences between Israel and America, Israel and, and other countries. Um, there's obviously gaps in culture and language, um, and just the just the fact that things are done differently in every place you live. Uh, you know, there have been times I've had difficult experiences, times when I've had overwhelmingly positive experiences, right, and I right. think. Uh, there are unique, the unique parts of the Israeli character that contribute to both. Right, Niv, did you, you even know that you were supposed to feel like a file in the beginning? Oh, of course. Well, listen, I have Israeli <laughs> parents, so I was prepared when okay. I got here. I spent a lot of time here as a kid, but I, I definitely, you know, I think that one of the things that people feel is that everything is such a process when you get here. You have to go through so much bureaucracy, and there's, there's, you know, a lot of steps. So again, it's, uh, it's kind of understandable. You know, there, there are people who are academics in uh, international development theory mm -hmm. that say that bribery is a good thing. Why? Because it helps you get outside all of the bureaucracy. In right. that way, the people Greases that... Greases the wheels. Exactly. The people that pay bribes, you know, they're not firing because they don't go through the whole thing. I don't think it's that extreme here, but there's still that sort of idea that, you know, if you can find a way to cut the line to get forward through all of the rules and bureaucracy, you know, it's something that's going to help you out. Right. Do you think it spills over to, to other, uh, uh, other areas of life in Israel? I think it's true. I think in, in people's dealings with the government, you know, they don't want to have to go twice to the same office because they forgot this form. They don't have to be sent from one line to another. Um, and that's part of the reason that I've been doing the work I have on, on No Friars, yeah. try to find the right place, the right way for people to, to get to the head of the line, to get so straight to what they want. What sort of, uh, of, of information do you have there? What sort of stories? Um, we, 
there we talk about everything having to do with consumer empowerment, citizen empowerment, about how they can find better ways to, um, for example, we just put up an article about everything you would want to do after you have a baby, giving mm. you a list right. of right. everything you can do from A to Z so that you know the right order to do everything in the right way, bring the right materials with you, and get everything done quickly. Right. I'll check that out later. Do you think that as a result of this fear, Israelis are, are better consumers? I don't know. I think that, you know, there's sort of a certain dance that's done. You know, if you think that, you know, in a negotiation, if the guy's going to start up here and you're going to start down there and you're going to meet somewhere in the middle, is that better than just sort of having a fair price to begin with? I don't know. <laughs> It just means that you have to go through more in order to get there. Right, And right. I think that we're also getting to an age where sometimes people value the convenience of not having to haggle. And they say, uh, you know what? What's another 50, sh 50 yeah, shekels I'll more for all these? I'll just right. pay. All right. Well, let's uh, move on. Cultural differences can often lead to amusing misunderstandings, but in the business world, they can also have a real economic, impl real economic implications. In our uh, next piece, we take a look at the challenges companies face when doing business in uncharted territory. Let's take a look. If you try to sell something in the Middle East, you better be familiar with the region. In the business world, the biggest brands have failed big time when it came to their cultural knowledge. For example, Mountain Bell, an American phone company, has tried to offer its service in Saudi Arabia by showing an ad with a businessman putting his feet on his desk and exposing his souls. Probably one of the rudest things to do in the Emirates. Widely ineffective, nobody wanted to follow such an impolite example. Even Nike didn't completely think through its graphic font before importing its flaming air in fire letters. The word air looks way too much like God's name in Arabic. The American Islamic Relations Council immediately threatened to boycott Nike, which had to recall 38,000 pairs of shoes from the market. Various institutions have had their own set of gaffes, like the World Bank president who took off his shoes in a Turkish mosque in 2007. To avoid any costly cultural faux pas, you may follow Intel's example and hire an anthropologist from Stanford who was paid to travel the world to understand how people use technology around the globe. In any case, to avoid offending your business partner, here are some tips. If you travel to Japan, don't make the same mistake as George Bush Sr. and throw up on the Prime Minister. If you attend a funeral, don't take a selfie, and whatever you do, never have holes in your socks. All right, Yoshua. Even I'm here in Israel, my, my socks are hole free so right now. <laughs> I, I won't, I won't uh, check right now, but I'm curious to hear what you think are the um, positive uh, aspects and the negative aspects of the, the Israeli businessman. Well, I think that a lot of the traits we think of as being perhaps characterized as being negative, there's two sides of the same coin. They have a positive side and a negative side. So, you know, we often think of Israelis as being direct. Sometimes they're perceived as being pushy. Mm -hmm. We think of Israelis... Um, sometimes as being very invested, interested, wanting to get to know you, mm -hmm. and some people will see that as being overly personal. And uh, Israelis are often very passionate about whatever they're thinking, doing, deciding. They're very involved and invested. Um, and some people can see that as being uh, overly excited, uh, argumentative, aggressive even at times. Right. And I think that uh, we just have to be aware of those cultural differences. Do you think, Neve, that we should try to make some changes in order to be more open to the world or more be accepted more? You know, I remember once when I was leaving at the airport, there was a sign that said, remember, you're the ambassadors to the world for travelers because they were also worried about, like, overly, you know, rambunctious uh, 20-somethings traveling in the world. I don't know if there's actually a way to change your culture mm -hmm. and just by deciding it. But I think, like Yoshu said, that there are upsides. You know, the, things, the same things that cause uh, uh, this idea of um, no friar is a man, you know, making sure that you're never getting screwed, is also the thing that makes people think outside the box to break mm -hmm. the rules. And Israel is known for its innovation. Those stem from the same place. Yep. So maybe we could get rid of the friarism, but there might be a big cost to a it. A big price to pay. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going. Every week, we ask our guests to bring us their own recommendations from the, sto the social status sphere. Let's see what we have today. Neep, let's start with you. What, are you. what did you bring us? I'm bringing you uh, a website. Uh, it's a group on Facebook called Secret Tel Aviv. It mm -hmm. is uh, not so different from No Fries. It's more of a message board. People post things about you know, apartments for rent and things for sale. But also, there's a lot of advice. You know, when I rented my apartment, my, my landlady wanted some ridiculous down payment that didn't, just didn't make sense to me. So I went on there and I said, hey, you know, what's going on? 
does anyone you know, think that this is an acceptable thing to do? Is this the norm? And that's, I think, one of the big parts, that you're not really sure what the norms are. Yeah. So I'm all of a sudden, I had like... 10 people saying, don't do that under any <laughs> circumstances. I did that once, and I got right. screwed. Right. And you know, someone else said, you know, here's an alternative that you can offer. And it's just a forum for people who will we'll, have those uh, take a look. What about uh, what about you? I, sure? I recommend NoFryers.com. Everyone of should course. check it out, especially uh, if you live here in Israel. It has a lot of useful information that can help you be a better consumer, a better citizen, let you know your rights, what opportunities are out there, and uh, I encourage you to look at it. All right, we sure will. Thank you, uh, uh, Yoshua. Thank, thank you, you Niv, for uh, joining us today. And uh, thank you at home for watching. You can uh, check out our website, i24news.tv, for our past shows. And um, you're, of course, more than welcome to join us again next week.